yeah, good day, everybody. Um, my name is Perry Chung. Uh, I work for LTS. I used to be tech support. Now I work for the business development department. And I will be presenting the specialty cameras uh, webinar that we're going to be doing today. Um, so let's get started. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions, please use the Q&A feature that you can find uh, in your top bar if you're full screen, uh, or if you're not full screen, then it will actually be on the bottom section uh, of the window, okay? Uh, we will be answering the questions uh, after I finish the webinar. Uh, we will not be doing it during the webinar, so uh, but don't, don't let that stop you from asking the question in the Q&A section. Uh, once you do have a question, type it out, uh, just in case that, you know, you might forget later uh, if you try to hold it. Okay, so we will be starting off uh, with the LPR from our three cameras uh, that we're going to be covering over today. Uh, and just to be certain, uh, there are two different LPRs or uh, what are referred to as LPRs uh, in the catalog. There are two model numbers, the CMIP 7923 WLPR-32R and the CMIP 7923 LPR-22, okay? Uh, if you are looking for a camera that does provide the number plate recognition or license plate recognition on the end device itself, the edge device, so the camera itself, then you are looking for the 32R, the one on the left. Uh, this one provides the license plate recognition function, and this is the one that I'm going to actually be talking about today as well, okay? Uh, the LPR-22 does not provide the actual number plate recognition function. Uh, it is a license plate capturing camera, as in it provides you with a um, set of focal lengths, uh, as well as a preset exposure time uh, and white light LEDs for allowing you to expose license plates well. Uh, that camera would be used in situations where you may have third-party software that provides the license plate recognition um, separately from the edge device itself. This is some kind of software that would scan the image or video coming from the camera and then recognize the license plate. Uh, we will not be talking about that. We'll be talking about the 32R, which has the license plate recognition function built within it, okay? Uh, the camera does not have white light LEDs. Uh, this one, the 32R, has IR LEDs, so it will be black and white uh, at night or in low light situations, okay? And it is compatible with all the NVRs in our current catalog. So this is the 87Q, the 87K, the 89, 86 uh, series uh, NVRs. Uh, all of them, as long as they are up to date with the most current version of firmware, uh, they will work with the license plate recognition function. Uh, this has been confirmed. Uh, there should be no issues with that. If you do have older units, uh, then they may not currently be compatible until you update them. Okay, though it is possible that maybe they do run a version of firmware that it does work with. Uh, but to be certain, you would be best to update if you're adding in the LPR camera into an existing system. Uh, it is also standalone capable. It does not actually require you to use an NVR. Uh, if you do not require an NVR or you are running in a situation where uh, adding the NVR is kind of unnecessary, to you because maybe you are just installing the LPR camera and nothing else, uh, then it is possible to use just the camera itself with an SD card, okay? Now, we'll talk about some installation requirements, okay? Uh, the installation requirements does require that um, the camera itself have less than 30 degrees uh, between the car and the height of the camera, uh, the license plate technically, and the height of the camera and the license plate, and the distance away from uh, the sidewalk or from the uh, path of travel. Uh, so for the first image in the top right, this is referring to the height of the camera. Uh, it uses H in both situations, uh, but the top right one actually is height, so uh, you don't want it to be more than 30 degrees. So if you install it too high so that the angle is too sharp downwards, then you're going to have difficulty capturing the license plate of the, of the car. 
And similarly, it's the same thing uh, when you're installing it uh, offset from the actual path of travel. So in this case, uh, down here in the bottom right, the car is traveling from the right to the left. So the path of travel is actually not directly in line with the camera itself. And so the camera should also have a roughly 30 degree angle uh, or less uh, with respect to the license plate of the camera when you're installing it offset from the path of travel, okay? Um, if you do not follow these uh, guidelines and you install the camera too far off or too far uh, too high up, uh, then you're going to encounter situations where uh, a license plate may travel through the image, but due to the extreme angles that you're encountering, uh, the license plate recognition camera is not actually able to recognize that there is a license plate there uh, due to the, you know uh, due to how the image looks uh, because of the angle. Uh, next, I will be talking about the black and white list feature. Uh, this is probably the biggest thing that is going to be available for you to use for the LPR beyond just the LPR functionality itself. Uh, it is possible for you to create black and white list onto uh, this camera. And even though they refer to themselves and black and as black and white lists, uh, you don't actually have to use them as black and white lists. You can just use them as two separated lists uh, that are just hard-coded to be called black and white, uh, and you can actually make it do whatever you want uh, if a specific license plate uh, that falls under that white list or that black list uh, is encountered by the LPR. Uh, to give you some real-world examples, uh, about three or four times at the very least that I have assisted on, uh, people have wanted specifically white listing license plates to open gates. So this would be in a situation like a gated, uh, gated community where uh, rather than having someone directly control the gate itself manually, uh, confirming the person, uh, the LPR, you can actually add in license plates for whitelisted people, people who are allowed to go in. Uh, and when the LPR detects it, uh, you can actually trigger a relay. So in this case, that would be your gate. Uh, it would trigger it so that when the whitelist detects the, the car, uh, the gate will open. If it does not detect the car, so it could be in the blacklist or it could just not be in any list at all, uh, then it will not open the gate. The other situation would be the blacklist. Um, I haven't really encountered too many scenarios where this could be used. However, uh, an example might be that you have some cars from people who you believe to be causing problems. So this would be in the frame of reference with your end user, the your customer, not, not you as a customer of LTS, but your customer, the end user themselves, uh, if they believe that there's someone causing issues uh, and they have a specific car or license plate attached to that person, they can add them into the blacklist and then they can set uh, the blacklist to notify either through email or through uh, push notifications on the phone so that they know that when that person appears or that car appears to keep track or to maybe uh, be more vigilant and, and watch out for those people who may be causing problems, okay? Uh, next, we'll, we'll go into a little bit on the how to extract. Uh, I don't actually have access to a device right now, so I am only able to show you uh, how it's done. Uh, however, it is fairly simple, uh, I would say. Uh, it is found in the same section that you would actually export video out of your recorders when you're doing it locally, uh, except instead of being in the video section here, you can see in the left uh, in the left picture, we are actually under smart search and under vehicle search. Uh, you search it the same way. You provide it with the channel that you want to search your license plate for. You provide it with the time frame that you want to search for as well. And though I did not include this, there is actually a field for you to type in a license plate and it does not in fact need to be a full license plate. It can be a partial license plate. I did not show this here, but I do show it in the remote section, which we will cover in just a minute. And uh, you can actually filter out to the specific license plates that you have. Uh, you'll see the license plates. Uh, you can see them as thumbnails. That is not the actual video. Uh, the thumbnail itself is just so that you can actually see uh, what was captured by the camera or what it believes the license plate 
uh, that it captured at the very least. And you can see over here that when you click on the thumbnail, it gives you the thumbnail on the left, and then on the right, it actually gives you the full picture or the full video for you to play. And you'll notice that the video has the embedded information about the camera, including the, the plate number uh, at the bottom of the video itself. This is added in uh, in post, so this is actually not part of the actual video itself until the camera produces the video. So the camera gets the information and then adds it in at the bottom of the video itself, okay? Uh, next, for remote data retrieval, uh, I do not show how to do this on Internet Explorer or any browser. Uh, it is possible to do it. It is not uh, the easiest way to do it. So I do not recommend using a browser to retrieve that information uh, for you. But if you if you must, it is possible. Uh, I would recommend instead to use the NVMS V3 software uh, in order to facilitate data retrieval for your uh, license plates. And this can be found in the data retrieval section. Uh, this is not like uh, the local one where you would find this section that is normally used for exporting video. This is actually not normally used for exporting video. Uh, this is for the more advanced features, such as license plate recognition in this case that we're using. So in data retrieval, we have vehicle retrieval. And again, we have the time frame that we're looking for. So search in at the top. We have the type, which is just vehicle. Uh, we can choose other things there, but uh, for our camera at the very least, we're going to be using vehicle and you can see that I have selected my specific camera, which is the LPR. You can select other cameras, but in my case, if I selected them, they're not LPRs, so they would actually not provide me with anything. And I would search and I would be able to find uh, the same thing, though it does not actually crop in as much onto the license plate. So it has a smaller license plate relative to the entire uh, thumbnail. Uh, but the overall video has not actually changed. And over here on the right, you can actually see that I do provide it with a partial license plate. I did not need a full license plate to do my search. And it was still able to find uh, this specific license plate that appeared uh, when someone came into our parking lot, okay? And next. Uh, so these are going to be about notifications. Uh, notifications are probably a pretty big thing for license plates. Uh, this will be very useful when pushing it to your customers. Uh, they'll be able to get pretty much instantaneous notification uh, about license plates being recognized. Uh, if they don't want it for all license plates, which by default it will be for all license plates, they can choose it for, like I said earlier, blacklisted license plates or whitelisted license plates. Uh, to notify and not have it for every single other license plate as well. Uh, though in my situation, I did do it for all license plates because there's actually not a high volume of license plates uh, going through our parking lot. Uh, you can see that it does provide, uh, this is on Android. Um, I don't have any images for iPhone, but uh, it does work exactly the same on iPhone, uh, but this is just uh, an Android look at it, okay? So you can see that I did get my push notification in my notification drawer. It provides me with the camera and it tells me that it did recognize a license plate number. You can see though that it does not actually provide the license plate number within the notification itself. I have to tap on the notification and then it provides me with a screenshot of when it captures the license plate. So that also includes the embedded information and also it gives me uh, in the notification itself the, t the time, so today uh, or it's not technically today, it was uh, whenever I took the picture at 524.41. It gives me again the camera that I got and it does actually provide me with the full license plate number here. So I don't actually need to go into the live view and zoom in or actually uh, read this smaller text here in the embedded information. Also, if you were to go into the app uh, and uh, I didn't say this, but uh, just to say, uh, the app is LTS Connect. Um, NVMS 7000 will not provide these uh, alarm notifications for you guys. Uh, this has been the case since at least, I believe, February or March of this year. Uh, everyone should have received emails stating that uh, notifications on NVMS 7000 were going to be shut down around that time. So this is all in LTS Connect. Uh, in LTS Connect, if you had ignored or if you had swiped out your 
notification without actually tapping into it, you can go into your notification list and you can actually find all the notifications uh, previously as well, unless you clear these out, okay? So this is the notifications uh, of the license plates for you. Um, for the most part, as an installer, probably not as big of a deal, but for the customer itself, they're probably gonna care a lot about this. Uh, pretty instantaneous notification is very nice. It provides you the information in a very good format. Uh, and I would say that this is probably better than emails, uh, though I do know that there are some people out there who like emails more than uh, having an app with notifications. <laughs>